The, the original title is different. And I think I had a page with me, but now it's lost. But nevertheless, I wanted to have this that way because of the twice US in it. And this is on purpose. What's good for us in the US? Bad criminal policy, bad, it's not necessarily maybe bad, and I should not go straight on saying that it's bad, but it is bad and you might not agree with me. Therefore, I put it in this parenthesis so in case we can discuss it. But us and US can be read both ways. So it's quite important to have this us, because us is inclusion. And I call this bad because I think that what makes the criminal policy in a specific way is to what extent it is us or is it just US? No matter who is involved, but, but that we will get together. As I said at the beginning, it's a long time when I was speaking last time in English. So I had no practice. You're doing Therefore, fine. well, <laughs> now I'm not doing fine. I, I actually will do better if we communicate and if we discuss. So instead of saying what the whole things will be about, I propose that we talk a little bit. And this is pop-up quiz topics, actually started and created not by me, but by my students. And the things we will discuss today is how far the number of crimes has an impact on the number of people in prison. So what do you think? What is the relation between number of crimes and number of inmates? Is that related or not? In the US? No, generally speaking. Generally speaking, in any place. Well, the lady here is saying no. <laughs> but why not? Oh my god. <laughs> no, no. no oh, not because the statistic to... says so. The statistic, I think, shows that uh, the number of crimes does not the, the, the lower number of crimes does not necessarily reduce the number of prisoners. Which statistics? American, that's what I American statistics. American statistics are saying that the crimes are going down and the number of prisoners are that, going that up it, or it stayed the same. Yeah. Okay, so the, the one the one answer is that we've got it in the statistics, right? We've got less crimes, but nevertheless we keep more <coughs> prisoners. Anyone has different opinion? In Russian it is called prinuditelli valanciori. <laughs> in the last row. What's your opinion in the last row, in the dark? Yeah, you, you, both of you. Just speak up. You agree, and if you agree, why? And if you are not agreeing, why? Okay, yes. Well, I think that if there are more crimes um, that people get away with, that means uh, overall, uh, Plus, right? No, you're not. You are thinking very well. You're saying that we actually, as I understood what you wanted to say, that we can have a lot of crimes, but since we are not clearing it out, it does not impact on the number of prisoners. Yes, thank you. It's, very, <laughs> it's a very interesting thought, because usually we are not getting to this from this perspective. Usually we are just measuring numbers of people in prison. Uh, the gentleman is saying, well, in fact, we might have a lot of crimes, but we still have less people in prison because we are not catching the criminals. It's very interesting. Okay, so it might be false, right? Anyone is thinking differently? Well, the number of prisoners is growing in the United States, the whole industry, right? And it's not, uh, it's not the, number of, the number of prisoners is growing because it is a whole industry. That's another angle of the things that we are going to talk about today. Right? So, so suddenly the, net, the, the word industry is coming when it comes to people and when it comes to prison. But we have to have, keep that in mind as well. Something else? Well, if I, may, I, without any statistics, just intuition, I think, more crimes, more prisoners. 
because we have a good policy, they are catching uh, criminals and putting them in the prison. That's a typical way of thinking. Yeah. Thank fine. you very much. That's the typical way we, we would think, right? We've got more crime, we've got more criminals. As more we are prisoners. saying, prisoners, yes, prisoners. As we, are say, as we are seeing here, it is not necessarily so. The crime might go down and we might not have less prisoners. Well, the crime actually might be quite high, but we are not having this in the statistics, and therefore we have less prisoners than crime. Anything else? Well, one thing there are... Oh, there is much, much more possibilities. <laughs> There's actually much more possibilities. But one thing that I would like to point is that, in fact, the more prisoners you have, the more crime you might have. So the more often people are getting to prison, oh no, they're not this. <laughs> Maybe it's not mine. No, it's not yours. Good. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> if this is in the code, this is not my code for the moment. Okay. So it might be like that that the more people are getting to prison, the more often they are coming back to prison for many different reasons, right? They might be perceived as criminals. They might be really criminals because they might not get anything else when they get out of prison. So th there might be additional possibilities, but let's just keep that. And what about law and order produce prisoners? Is this false or true? Lady, in the very back, Prinuditielny Evalanciorki. But do you mean the film? Or the TV series? Yeah. No. I'm sorry. I was living for 12 years in this country, and I didn't know that there is a movie and like love going on in this country, so... Oh, law and order, actually, yes, I know that. <laughs> yeah, and it was discussed in Poznan at a very interesting seminar, but I only watched the part that I had to discuss. So usually I'm not watching it. No, it's not serious. It's just the statement that when we have the law and order, not law and peace, but law and order, we really take care of the observing the law and acting in accordance with it, so then we are punishing severely those who are breaking the law. Who we'll accept that? And is it producing prisoners or not? Who is for it? Okay, let's do it like that. The gentleman. Uh, 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 okay. Who is against? So, for and against? Yeah. So, why, why are you against? I don't know, I think law and order is a, is a, could have a dubious meaning. I mean, it depends whether we understand law and order as uh, law and order in society, as peaceful society, or whether it's a term uh, created by an establishment uh, to, mm, to name certain rules that, that they, that, they want uh, people to obey, but it's not necessarily uh, making the society uh, orderly. But then what you're saying, will it produce more prisoners or not? It depends which, because it, that's a very smart comment, because if the law and order is an existing condition in a society, yeah. then it shouldn't produce more prisoners. But if it's a, a policy uh, or if it's a, a, a slogan yeah. of a party, law and order, mm -hmm. then it might pr pr produce more prisoners because this means we will be chasing them wherever they are at the corner of the street and things like that. Yeah, it's, it, 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 if it, it's a moving, if, if it has a moving meaning, then it, yeah, it might produce more prisoners. And when it is not producing more prisoners? Well, I think of it literally, literally, like law and order is the product of law is some kind of punishment that if you break the law, that you become this prisoner. It is the punishment for breaking the law. Mm -hmm. but yeah, no law equals no crime because there's no such thing, and then there's no prisoners. So if there's law, there there's crime. <laughs> 
That's a logical argument. <laughs> yes, maybe not. Because what, what do you have in mind behind that? There is no law, no crime. But is it really no crime? No crime in a sense, in the legal sense, right? Mm -hmm. But in a sense that the people are hurt and the people are not getting proper security. Yeah, but there's no one that puts those people in prison. All right, then there is nobody to put the people in prison. Yeah, this is a very good argument. Um, and frankly, I wasn't very okay by putting those questions because I didn't really allow you to think in a different way, from a different angle. So the third question is, probation is an alternative to punishment. Is it true or not? It seems to be rather an alternative to going to prison because it is a kind of punishment. As far as I, as I know, uh, because certain uh, laws are um, seized for such a person, uh, certain um, rules are imposed, such a person needs to come to the police station every day and uh, somehow sign in that, the, that uh, he or she is still in this state, for example. Right? So it is. Uh, a kind of uh, punishment, but of a different type, I think. Any other idea? And if you would... I, I know that you're not lawyers, most of you, right? But if you have to tell me what kind of penal measures do you know, what would you mention? What kind of punishment do you know? How we can punish people? With what? Don't In accordance to criminal law. Work. Imprisonment. Imprisonment. What else? Fine. Well, first was fine, which is fine. <laughs> work. When you mean work, with what is it? This work. Social work? Yeah, this is this probation, what we call probation, right? Uh, something else? Capital punishment. Capital <laughs> punishment. <laughs> Not in Europe, right? But capital punishment. Fine, probation, explain fine. what it is. Could you explain? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. So what is interesting is that it's important what we think first. Because when we take the Polish criminal law and when we take most of the European criminal laws, you have a great change from uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, and from the 90s, from the whole change when we started to think differently, the punishment looks like that. First, it is fine. Then it is probation, and probation means different things in a different places. But most often, this is something that means the work which are pro the work which you do for the community, and it might be a different kind of work. It might be work done like that, that you are working in your work, but <coughs> part of your salary is taken away. So it's a, a different kind of fine. But it might be also that for certain hours during a month, you are doing a lot of different things if we are having a good invention, right? In Finland, people were renovating the castles. In uh, Estonia, there was a very popular thing to take care of Cementary. Cementary is called cementary where you've got bodies, right? In Poland, there is more and more popular to keep people not only in cleaning the streets, but those who are good in it, they are working in from hospitium to the places for old people and children. And frankly, this is something that we found that, that we gain experience in prison and then moved to the probation services with it. So probation is kind of working for community. In addition, you might get a probation officer, so there is a person who is um, observing your work, but it also is to help you with dealing with different everyday deals, right? So that's a probation. And actually, that goes like that. Only the last one, when, and there is a special article in the Criminal Code of Poland which is saying that only when we have no choice we are using imprisonment. But in our head, for some reason, 
when we think about punishment, we think most in most cases we think about prison. So why is it? I will try to to do to deal with it. And as you can see, there is a difference between probation is an alternative to punishment, and probation is an alternative form of punishment. Someone said that probation should be an alternative to imprisonment. It's in a way a wrong way of thinking. We should start thinking that imprisonment is really an alternative to other punishments, which would take some time, and I hope that I will manage to show you why we've got this problem, because it's not by an accident. And if I would ask you, how many of you would invite to work, would give a work to someone who just left prison? Who is willing to give work? One, two, three, any work. The work that you are giving. But you have to be serious. Yes? Five, seven, uh, that's much more than average uh, class at the law faculty, I must say. And no, <laughs> doesn't matter if it is uh, Austin, Bydgoszcz, Poznań, Kraków, Warszawa. Uh, over there, there you've got just two, three. But when you are in the <coughs> Denmark, you would have really almost everyone who would raise their hand. And again, I think that we have to step out from what, who we are and how we are and see it in a broader perspective. Because this is not an accident. The way that, actually you are quite a lot, but the way that being quite a lot, it's not everyone who raised their hand saying, well, it's, it's normal. It's, it's, evident that those people have to work, right? And they are just as average citizen, and we have to include them in our society. We don't have that kind of thinking, and it's not that we are bad people, and it's not an accident. It's something more, and hope we will manage to do it. So what are the criminal policies depending on? And this was the question that, that I wanted to ask myself. Is it amount of crime committed? Is it amount of crime that are cleared out? And we got that too. Amount of crime created. Can we create crimes? Yes, we are creating the law. Stating officially that this is the crime. Okay, that's one of the ways, right? Do you remember any recently created law? Criminal laws. The very typical year 2000. In 2000, for example, we make the law that says that anyone who's got even a small amount of marijuana, right, mm -hmm. is committing a crime. That's a new thing. Another thing that we did, Poland has a specific system that, for example, Sweden has not, right? But Poland has a specific system which says that the crimes, the, 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 the things that are breaking the law are divided between offense and misdemeanor. Is the manner is in a different category of book, so these are not crimes, right? But sometimes we are moving those behaviors from one place to another, this act. And what we did recently was we said that if you drink and drive, this is a crime. And this was a very characteristic example of what you can do with something that is ideally meant as a proper thing, but work badly. But I'm putting this aside. If you are going to be interested in it, we'll talk about it. But you can also create crimes in a different way, right? The way I see that we are creating crimes right now is like that. Did you fight when you were in schools? Did you fight with other people? With your colleague? No. I did. I did. And when we were fighting with... Okay, maybe one. No, I, I was fighting with everyone who called me fat, right? And since I was fat, so they were calling me fat, and I was fighting. And each time when this situation happened, I was invited to master of the school, and we had a discussion, and I had to stay in, in class, and actually everybody had to stay in class. Mm -hmm. So we had to stay in class and do some things, and that's it, right? But well, today it wouldn't be like that. The law did not change. But today, you, you are not called to your master, but the police is called to school. So probably in today's schools, I would end up very quickly in some institution for incorrigible children, right? 
which is not really funny. So you can create crimes by looking at what you are seeing and naming it not a problem, not an educational problem, not the things that young people are doing, but you can call it crime. And therefore, this is the way we are often creating crimes. And of course, if I am a child of somebody who is very important, right, then I will be simply a victim of a bad behavior of somebody else. And then somebody else will have trouble. So you can do a lot of things here. Tendency to exclude and include, we already discussed that. Well, economy, does economy have anything to do with that? Does the state of welfare or welfare state has an impact on how many people we are keeping in prison? Here, the title is what U.S. has to do with it, right? And what we have from U.S. by um, looking at it. Just for a short moment still, can you tell me who is here a criminal and who is not? She was my teacher in school, so very often she had to deal with all those fighting that we were doing. Right. And that, that guy, didn't he look like a criminal? No, that's your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of people are taking him. But there is a person here who killed a person and is sitting in prison for 25 years. Well, this is part of the uh, action that we did. And I'm very, really thankful to, at that time, um, Polish Ombudsman, Professor Andrzej Tsol, who agreed to pause like a criminal and to be placed as a one of them. You can see here, all of them down there, right? We put that, this, this was an exhibition which was hanging in the Metro uh, Vilanov, just to make people think about how easy we are to put a blame and how easy we are to put a, what you call this, label, right? The label of a criminal to someone who is leaving prison and is having the papers, while in fact, it's not so easy to find out who is or who is not. We are not, by being sentenced, becoming immediately a different people. But in fact, we are very much treated like a different people, which at the end might also produce us as someone who is behaving. <coughs> and here, who is here? <coughs> this Anyone? Looks like a criminal? Uh, this is a group of my students, actually, who were doing a fantastic job by bringing every week to prison classes concerning law. The, the whole thing was called street law, and they were trained to talk about law in a way which is understandable to, to average citizen who is not a lawyer. But what they got, I mean, they got a lot. And uh, those who were in prison were saying that if we knew all this, maybe we wouldn't end up in prison. Because there was a guy who was sentenced for beating up the person who sold that person a wrong TV, the TV which was out of order, broken, right? But he had no, no idea that he can go and claim the whole TV to be repaired or exchanged. So instead, he went and beat the person up and ended up in prison. So sometimes it is so simple. And if you can see, this is how it looks like in practice. If you would see how many crimes we have from 2000, 2000, oh, it should be 11. Oh, it's to 12, but it is from 2008. We have, oh, that's, oh, that's just uh, one year. Yeah, oh, yes. 
that's from the one year. So this is a wrong things, but if you would look, here you can see that it's changing, but if you would look at the number of crimes, the crimes is going down, but the number of people in prison depends on a very different situation. And of course, what you can see here is that when we were starting with the people who were perceived as dangerous, there was quite a lot of them. We've got less and less those who are perceived as dangerous, but the problem is that we've got a lot of places for them. So the prison is looking at the situation when they have to do something with those who are in prison, but what we have more and more is the people who are sentenced for a very long time. So. Once we started the tendency to the life imprisonment, we are really using it. And this is just to see who is working with those people, right? These are the prison officers. And actually, Poland has the biggest number of the highly educated officers who are working in a prison service. But it, these are the people who've got work there and who has to keep them. But now I'm going to something which will tell us about what's the relationship between number of crime and number of people behind the bars. And a good example is with the three countries here, it's Holland, Sweden, and Finland. You've got a long time, and as you can see, what's happening is that this is Finland. Finland is this from the very top going down, right? This is Sweden, keeping the pace. And Holland, beautiful country, Holland. Children, I mean, the, how they call those? Children with flowers and marijuana in the red district. Life very easy. And then suddenly they have a lot of prisoners. Well, they were really having the stories why do they have so little prisoners? Because during the war, the judges who were Dutch were sitting in prison, so they found out what's the reality is behind bars, and they never put people behind prisons. That's okay. What's the proper words for a bullshit? <laughs> BS. BS. This is a story, right? The truth is, this was a, we thought that those judges are extremely rigid and that they know what they are doing, and they are not easy to send anyone behind bars. This was our story, which is also not true. There is something more to it, right? And look what is happening in Scandinavian countries. Here we've got only Finland and Sweden, and here we have those three. So the red line is the Finland going down, right? And the rest of the countries, as you can see, are more or less the same. So, any intuition what might happen? Why Finland is going down so rapidly? Higher income. Good intuition. So you're saying the people are more, the more people are getting money, the less prisoners they have. But is it work that way? Is it working that way? Is it working that way, or maybe the other way around? Well, okay. If you look into how many crimes they are committing per 100,000 in 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you see that there is really not much which we can point out, right? Because um, this is assault, homicide, and one thing must, must be clear, in Finland, they are solving their problems that way, that they are killing each other. So you've got more killings in Finland than in other countries. And you should not take it too serious, because the Finnish are simply like that. <laughs> and this is nothing that tells bad about them. And uh, frankly, I must also admit that I have a lot of problems with Finnish people, because I um, there is a openly speaking, I envy them. They started the same time as we. They were for a very long time under the Russian uh, influence. They had a very similar history, because this is like 1807, when they are given away by Sweden to Russian. So this became a Russian empire. 
Okay, there is a little bit difference because when we were sent to Siberia, Finnish people were asking the Tsar to let the prisoners to be sent to Siberia, which never happened in our country. But never, did, and they had to ask like once and second and third time, telling, "Well, we've got such a bad prison. We don't want them here. Please take them to Siberia." So the Tsar said at the end, "Okay, I'll take them." But after like 20 or 30 years, they came up to the conclusion, "Well." Why do they have to dry their mats? We've got mats too. They can dry our mats. So they again asked the Tsar, Tsar, we will not send our prisoners to, to Siberia. And the Tsar said, OK. So there, there is this slight differences in our political situation. But apart from that, uh, uh, up to the 60s, up to the 60s, this was really a country under the strict Russian influence. And as you can see, if you look at the other part of crimes, they are growing equally. There is no much difference. Yeah. Okay, the, the Finnish are a little bit more often getting this homicide, but they are drinking as much as we are. They are depressive as much as we are. They are easy get into melancholy, they have to drink a lot before they start singing, they like to keep, keep quiet, which is not bad. I mean, we should not uh, think that they are just in, uh, inver invertive, inverted, introverted. introverted. They simply are like that. There is, there is nothing interesting to say, why should they bother, right? So apart from that, if we look at the point where we were, the, the worst prison, the worst prison, a lot of prisoners inside very uneducated um, people who are working in prison, extreme differences between the situation of women and men, totally like rather Russian country and not like the Scandinavian countries. And look what's going on. <coughs> because one of the things we, we, we would say, okay, they, they, they've got such a low number of inmates in Finland because they got less crime. But it's just the opposite. One might say, well, that's why they have so many crimes, because they let people out of prison, right? But as you can see, the situation is more or less the same in other countries. The number of crimes is growing. The number of inmates in Finland is going down. Not in the three other countries. Not in. Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. They keep the same pace. Where is the most, where is the, the country with the most countries per hundred thousand? What the country is? Which one is it? But they started from a different point. So Who? Finland. Yeah, they started from, this is yeah, prisoner hard. rates per hundred thousand population. They started from almost 200. We had at that time 234. So this was more or less the same situation as in Poland, right? They get below Swedish, Swedish standard, and that's the only justice that we have here in our city policy. So why? What's going on? As you can see, here is the offenses against criminal code. Who has the most? Sweden, right? Remember, Sweden is the country where you've got most crime per 100,000. Why? Well, in Finland, they must be using alternative methods of punishing. Yeah, but why, the, the, sorry, because I didn't say, why, why Sweden has most of, most of crime per 100,000? And our politicians are saying that. There is more crime in Sweden than in Poland. There is more domestic violence in Sweden than in Poland. People right? are moving there. More people are moving there, Sweden. More Im Im immigrants. Oh, they have a <laughs> That's an American statement. And German, really. And Polish, actually. Just think about it. Why, it, why it's going together? Um, they no. have a very strict code. I mean, they, they have very strict laws. And uh, a lot of things are... Uh, in uh, we don't have a strict law? Oh, they yeah. have strict Law. In what sense? In a sense that more things are considered offenses Crime. and crimes, perhaps? They don't have a stricter, but you are right. I mean, they don't have a misty manners. So if you are speeding, you are breaking the law. So they put it on the list of crimes. So if you look at the number of crimes 
over 60%. It's going to be shoplifting and the driving tickets for different driving misdemeanor, but which is not called misdemeanor, but it's called the, the ticket that you got for driving. So the 60% is done straight by a policeman. The next 20% is done by a prosecutor who is giving a small fine. Then the 10% is done by the different institution dealing with young children and uh, the poor people and the sick people. And then the rest 10% is dealing with the courts. So in this sense, they are strict. They just count everything. They are not dividing. How do we know if we are stealing something or if we are not stealing something in Poland? It depends on the value. Exactly. So if your wallet is taken away, it's just depending on what kind of wallet you've got and what you've got in your wallet, and then police will take the things or not. Frankly, they will do everything to not to take it. But uh, this is how we are acting, right? And of course, um, I remember the moment when Miller was the Minister of Interior and he big, made a big um, press conference and declared, our government deal with crime. We've got 40,000 less crimes than last year. And I almost got an accident because I started to laugh so much. Because he was, of course, right. He just didn't say that what happened was that we changed the law. And from 150 slotty, we put it the line for stealing to 250, right? So he didn't say that at the same moment, we've got 40,000 more misdemeanors. That information was put aside. But that's how we can really control and manipulate the statistic which exists. But coming back to Scandinavian situation, you've got Finland that is going down, and you've got no excuse to say, well, that's because the crimes went down. You also cannot say they are not... The, the gentleman behind would say, the number of crimes are not cleared out. That's why. Well, is it correct or not? Not for two reasons. First of all, we see it that they are growing. We see that here is going down, and here the crimes are actually growing. They are not all the time growing, but there is quite a lot of them. Plus, there is another thing that the moment that we have less people in prison, the relationship between police and the, and the citizens is changing, and there is more and more people who are willing to go and inform police about all kinds of different things that are happening. So the clearing rate is extremely high in those countries, comparison comparison with Poland, but also with other countries. So this argument is also not valid for, for this purpose, right? So you have this strange situation of going down with prisoners, going up with number of crime, and here we should go for a moment to the United States. Because United States is important. Of course, it's a fantastic country. And I really love it, but when it comes to violent crime and murder, what you can see is that you've got number of criminal number of people put into prison that is rising, number of violent crimes rising, and number of murder, which is staying in line, but it's extremely high. What would be the conclusion out of that? You put more people to prison, but you've got more violent crime. That the system isn't working. And there is no relation, right? There is something else behind it. It's not really something that we can change and we can affect by putting people behind bars. This is not that. And that's how it looks in Finland in the same time. As I said, Murder is a specific thing in Finland, but even this is going down, right? They usually had four or five per hundred thousands. There is ten times more in the United States. But you've got a lot of violent crimes, as in the United States, but nevertheless the number of prisoners is going down. How you would explain that? 
And the director was saying that, okay, they started to use more probation, which is very correct. But the first question that we have to ask is why they are doing it. What the hell is going on? Why they are doing that, especially when we've got Holland, which looks that way. What's happening in Holland? What's happening in Finland? attributed either to Lenin or to Churchill or to other people, right? That if you want to know what society you are living in, you should go to prison. And in prison, you will see everything that's going on and you will understand the society. And this is to some extent true, but what we are not taking into consideration is that it's not just the one way road. It's not the way from society to prison. I think it is both way road. So what you've got in prison is going out also in a society. And the truth is that probably you have to reverse the statement of a gentleman. If you want to have more money, you have to lower down the number of inmates. If you want to be a richer country, you have to lower the number of inmates. But someone might say, well, what are you talking about? After all, the United States is one of the richest countries. So, what am I making a mistake or what am I missing here? There is something missing. But So we have to remember that it's not totally true what I said. Because, yes, it's true for Finland. Finland became richer when it lowered down the number of inmates. But the United States, is United States poorer than it was 10 years, 15 years ago? Depends who. The United States. Thank you. Right? So when we take the country as a whole, of course the United States is one of the most, the, the richer, I don't know if not, not the richest country in the world. But it doesn't mean that people living in the United States are equally rich. Well, but it sounds like communism, or it sounds like all the... Well, maybe not immediately communist. Maybe there is something else in it. But, but then what, what, what about Holland? What Holland has to do with it? Why in Holland you've got that many people suddenly in prison? Sweden is hanging, right? Finland is going down. Here is the, the line which will, will not stop. How would you give to young people who are committing crime? And it shows that everyone would give actually quite a lot. Of, so it's not that something is changing here. But what's happening in Finland, the, the reason they went down with the number of inmates is exactly that they, sudden, they stopped using prison, but they started to use probation. We have to answer the question why they did it. Maybe the prison system doesn't uh, it's expensive. work. Uh, it doesn't work. But well, we know about it. It doesn't work. And well, of course, so, so it may produce even more future prisoners. Yeah. But as you can see, it doesn't matter. Because it doesn't work also in... Uh, it doesn't work in Holland. Oh, you've got more prisoners. It doesn't work in the United States. It doesn't really. But you've got more prisoners. We, we heard business behind that. So it doesn't work. If we're saying it doesn't work, what do we have in mind? We are saying it is not giving us what we expect. It is not giving us less crime, more safety. It is not giving us this kind of things, right? But. This is Michel Foucault, and I will not go far because I would have to start a separate lecture. But Michel Foucault at some point said something extremely important. 
institutions are not existing in a society if they are not needed. So if the institution like prison is in society, despite the fact that we've got, it promised to punish the criminals so they are not coming back to crime. Well, but they are coming. It promised to limit the number of crime statistics. It's not. It promised to make the people feel better. Not. But if this is not working, this institution should collapse and disappear. Since this is existing, that says that it is actually giving some other, it, it's, it serves other purposes, right? And what are the other purposes? Well, the other purposes is that I can say, you see, I promise you happiness, and you're not happy because those people were bad. They destroyed my work. So I punished them, and I saw, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't do my work properly. Well, I can say, you're not going to listen to me? Really? Here they go. So I use it for that purpose. Well, I want to show that I am a strong politician. I promise you more severe laws that will bring us law and order. Of course, when I'm saying that, I'm giving a very clear, uh, I'm sending a very clear message that I'm good for nothing. I have no really good plans. But you are buying this statement. I mean, in the United States, every elections are going with this work, with, with this kind of talk, and people are choosing these people. And the same is in Poland. Look what will happen with the new election. How often we will go into saying that we need more severe. And we are not doing anything but changing the criminal law. The criminal law was changed recently 125 times. And we change it, putting more and more and more. So in a way, you're buying it. And this is really what we need the prison system for. But some of us could change. And some of us could stop it. So Finnish, which I'm enemy them for, they, they managed. Why? We know how they did it, right? They started to put less people in prison, simply. More probation, less prison. Why they did it? Maybe because they evaluated that uh, efficiency of the system is the same when putting uh, people to prison and when putting them uh, for probation. They did. Yeah, but they did. And the very good uh, Pavo Usital. Pavo Usital is a French, um, uh, French, Finnish citizen. The, the Finnish professor who checked which prison is more effective? Is the open prison more effective or is a closed prison more effective? And it's, he found out that the effectiveness in terms of coming back to crime is the same. So the same number of prisons are coming back after the open prison and after the closed prison. What was the reaction? What would be your reaction? If there is no difference, where we should put people? Well, why you're saying that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Finnish people came to conclusion. If there is no difference, why put people into closed prison? My students said, yeah, well, we shouldn't use the open prison. Then, right? <laughs> so, and that shows, the, that shows the way. Why do you want to put people to open prison? This is less, uh, less severe. Giving, um, and you want the crim are you on the side of criminals? <laughs> Do you want criminals to have the better life and maybe a TV set right? <laughs> and a fresh air? So this is one discourse and the other discourse is, well, what the hell? Why we should keep them in danger, right? They will come back to the society anyhow. Why they should be more sick, more bitter? more dangerous, well, better to keep them in an open prison. And that's the Finnish attitude which started to be in 70s, 80s, 90s, right? How long should I talk, actually? You can talk. No, I, I, will, soon, I will soon get to the end. But So that's, that. why the people who are under such a Russian influence start thinking differently? Look, if you look at this, 
and this is Scandinavian countries. Is really Finland a Scandinavian country with such a criminal policy? Is Poland a democratic country with more or less the same, but we're keeping going with it? When you are democratic, when you put it on your constitution or when you practice it, and I know that it's more complicated than we come to that, but really what's happening in Finland, this was around the 60s, when they realized that if they want to be part of the Scandinavian countries, they cannot go on like that. They cannot have the Russian criminal policy. They cannot have the policy of the imperial country. Well, I know it sounds horrible, but you've got at least two imperial. United States is the fading, fading away, shadowing imperium, but it's still imperium. Russia was an imperium which shade away and tried to become again an, an imperium. And part of the thinking is that the severe criminal policy is what we can afford. It's not only this, but it's part of that. But the Finnish had to make a choice. Where do we want to belong? Scandinavia or Soviet Union? Do you know what Soviet Union was? <laughs> no, I, I'm not. See, Russia and other countries. At some point, uh, one of my children didn't know what Soviet, what Soviet and I was really happy that it came to the point where you can leave and not knowing what the Soviet Union is. But Soviet Union was this 16 countries within the Russian Empire, right? So, making a very sincere and very pragmatic choice, they knew that they have to change it. And you are not changing only criminal policy. You will never change just criminal policy. They understood really that it's a process which has to include several things. They started it when they had economic crisis. They were not really rich. Lots of Finnish people were working in Sweden, Denmark. They had to immigrate, emigrate, right? So they were emigrating to other Scandinavian countries. And Finnish language is not easy for none of the other Scandinavian countries. It's a ugro Finn language which no Swedes, no Dan, Dane and Norwegian can understand. Danish and Norwegian are really using the same language. It's just the pronunciation is very different. Don't tell this to Norwegian. <laughs> but if you read it, the so-called Nynorsk is, is actually the, the, the Danish language. The Gamle Norsk is made a new one, Norwegian, but, but they can understand each other, not Finnish. Finnish have to learn Swedish or they have to learn English and this is the language of the communication. So language was not a part of it, but what they understood was that they have to have something to live on. So you need something in economy that will make a country growing from the economic point of view. and. Netia, this was Netia, the Nokia. Finnish... Uh, Nokia. Nokia. Nokia, right? Th this was one of the ideas. Probably you would point out others. So you've got economy which you start to do something that others are not doing. And you find out what it can be. You are not dealing with problems that you cannot deal with. Alcohol, I think that they cannot deal with the alcohol also because they've got so many institutes that are working on the problem of alcoholism, then too many people would lose the job, right? So they have to drink in order to let them work. Uh, so this was not, this was out of question, but inequality between sexes were extremely visible, and they started to work on it. So this gender mainstreaming, which is so uh, hated words and words in Polish, over there become enormous. It was normal that you have to include women and men in everything and think about it ahead. Equality, economy, also NGOs. 
This is something, you know, Finns might sit and not do anything. They are okay with themselves. And they had to take their things and start working, and it wasn't easy. So what they were doing, Danish, Danish way. You've got six, eight people who wants to do something, fine. You will be sponsored. But the important thing is that the people know each other in a small environment, and really the self-government is something that is experience and practice at every level. So this is force education. You can see, I mean, Polish children are probably extremely talented and very wise, but they have no equal possibility to gain the knowledge. Finnish solved that problem. They made an effort to make sure that small village, far away village, will have the same standard of education as people living in Helsinki and Turku. It's really, it is really easy to do. You send English teacher and pay them four times more in the remote place. And I saw it. It works. They hated the places at the very beginning because it's cold, dark. Sauna is the only and vodka, and the only thing that you can do really. So, but in a very in ten years time, ten years, fifteen times when we have the same time, they did that. And of course, the, the last things, Kuyu Long. And I always pro pro pronounce this words, the, this name wrongly. So, Kuyu Long would be probably more. He's dead now, and he was always drunk. This guy was always drunk. And he was the director of all prisons. Director of prisons in Finland. And I observed him months by months. So I'm, I'm really saying this not just for the purpose of making an impression. This guy was every day in newspapers, in radio, in TV with this red nose and uh, the expression which Ed evident itself that he's not sober, but it didn't really make problem for what he was speaking. And he was telling people, we have to change the criminal policy. We cannot put so many people in prison. We cannot really, we cannot afford it, not only because of money, but we cannot afford it because of the society. We have to change our way of thinking. Can you imagine the prison director like that in Poland? We have one. We had one prison director, and of course, he, he also knew that once he said that, he will be fired. But he already was a general and had a good uh, um, retirement. retirement, yeah, so he didn't mind. And, and he said that. So there was one guy who, who managed to express that you would not fire anyone for saying things like that in countries over there. So several things taken together. And prison was only one of the point. And of course, how you do it? One thing, you put a probation, but well, how do you change from one day to another? So what they did, they take the law seriously. They really made an effort to bring the Council of Europe, European standards into practice. And they were following line by line. At some point, I was giving my book away, which was on Scandinavian prison system. And I was in Azerbaijan with the lady from the Ministry of Justice in Finland. And she told me that, well, you know, a week ago we changed the whole law because we include the European prison rules into our law, which meant for me two months additional work and redoing the whole things because the whole Finland was already out of order, out of um, context, right? But, but this is how they are doing it, to make sure it will work. They take something that is just a suggestion and make it a law. And of course, they started to train people in a different way. These are the people who are coming back to society. The Finnish society is one of the most happy society today, which doesn't mean that they are not killing each other, which doesn't mean that they are not drinking, which doesn't mean that they are not getting sad, but they are really living far away from what they were doing at the beginning. Just look at this, right? That, that's the only good feeling of mine, because they became the best. They became the best, and they didn't realize that, that this is the point when they can lead the rest of the Scandinavian countries. This is not in their head. They are still have this idea that they have to fall 
only follow what the Swedish and others are doing. So that, that's part of my satisfaction. But, but coming back to, 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 to a very point, there is a difference. I mean, if you want to change, you have to know what is behind it, and you have to know why they are doing it. They wanted to be Scandinavian, they didn't want to be uh, Russian. But then we are coming to the very beginning and saying, okay, but what it is about US and what it is with US and what it is what I was telling all the time. I think that here we have really an explanation and it's not in this uh, page. Poland is not taken into consideration, but you will be able to place Poland even through the way you are acting and through the way you are thinking. And if you think that you think the way you think, just because you are original and unique, unique well, that is not totally so. We are the product of the places we are in. And of course, Holland and Finland is the best example of the fact that things can change. Things can change for better, from my perspective, or for worse when it comes to Holland also from my perspective. But this is, this is done by Dinian and Cavadino, two professors from Italian origin working, of course, in England and in the United States. But the, what they said is that actually criminal system and criminal policy is a reflection and affection of the political economy that the state is in. If I'm not saying something that is understandable, you, you just have a right to ask a question and interrupt me. But what he said is, I mean, what they are proposing is to look at the criminal scene from the more broad perspective. United States are here. Sweden and Finland are here. The Netherlands, Holland, moved from here to here. They made this, forget about Japan for a moment, but they, they divided the possible countries into three major models, neoliberal, conservative, social democratic. And in those countries, if you are in a social democratic countries, you will see that the organization of the economic and social policy is really oriented on a welfare state. So it's not just that we are rich and Danes are rich, Swedes are rich, Norwegian are rich, and Finland now is one of the richest country. But they are rich in an equal way. The people in the country are more or less living on the same standards. It doesn't mean that you don't have poor people there and that you don't have very rich people there. Probably you have them, but the every level of everyday life, the condition of living, the condition of work, the condition of chances for education is more or less the same for everybody. I I'm saying more or less so often because when you take the prison population you will see that those people are very different in that sense that if we have, who has, who is here without any problem? Everybody are healthy? No economic problems? Family okay? Enough money? Feeling happy? The truth is, each of us will point one or two problems that we have. But what is specific for the people who are ending up in prisons is that they will have four or five. They will have all of it. No home, no family, no group of support, alcoholic problems, health problems. But we've got just some of them. Right? So that, that's a different, and that's why I'm saying more or less, because also in this country, those differences are very visible. So one of the things is economy. You will have this welfare state, state 
from the economy point of view, and you will have in the United States a very neoliberal state. So the state where, and it should be another also lecture, but the state where we are saying that everyone, everything depends on us, that we can manage, right? American dream. You know how you get to get millions? Well, you find an apple, you clean an apple, you sell it, and then you take, you, you get two apples, you clean it, and you sell it, and you've got a, four apples, and then you are really getting from your rich aunt a lot of money, right? But, but that we forget. We're talking only about these beginning apples. So in a welfare state, you have, I mean, welfare state is oriented on make the people living more or less in a very equal condition. And you are growing with knowing that you are equal and that you can, right? In the United States, it sounds fantastic. Yes, we can. But of course, there is a lot of differences between groups of people. I love this country. I love this country because when you are there working at the university, having good salary, living in a wonderful places, which is like from the fable, the life is fantastic. But if you want to know how the real life looks like, you just have to go three or four streets, districts far away from your paradise and, and you see the different world and those different worlds coexist not on an even conditions right you've got like several percent of the people who are owning most of the goods and the value of the is best for, for the others and of course from this they are showing that you've got some other consequences and one of the consequences is that dominant penal ideology is law and order here you, you have this talks about more law, more strict law in order to have an order, right? So what we are proposing now, which I'm getting really very frightened about, is that in every school we will put a camera. No one is asking who, who is really doing money on it and how far we will we pay in a social cost. So here is not anyone thinking about social costs. Here is right based. So we've got a law, we have to observe this law, but we are human beings. And in this country, I mean in this system, I'm thinking about myself. If I'm okay, that means that everyone else could be okay. And if they are not okay, it's their problem, right? And if they are not behaving well, we are just ex ex excluding them. Over there, you are actually including people. I will be finishing here, but this is exclusionary, that's inclusionary. Holland is in the middle. So you've got Germany, you've got France, and you've got New Netherlands that moved out from one place to another. And the question would be, why they moved out? Why from being okay, they moved to the something that is You talk about the socialization, but you also are talking about civil punishment. You're talking about a uh, moderate welfare state, but you are more oriented on doing your own money. And you are not that much working on inclusion. You rather are willing to exclude people. Well, I would go into what the lady proposed at the very beginning. I think, I think that really Holland was facing problems with, with, it, with its past, with its colonial past, and with the people who were not having the same possibilities and the same condition. So from the econ economy was reoriented because of the number of, not foreigners, because they are not foreigners, but people from different cultures and the tension that Holland also met in relationship to the European Union, being very different and trying to adjust. This could be one of the reasons why they get so straight into the situation where imprisonment is called moderate, but since they were from this position into this position, it really shows that the number is growing. And of course, it is also growing because they are starting to build more prisons. They are starting to put the business behind. 
And in a country like that, which is United States, prison is the place of the business. I can see that people are tired, so I should start finishing, but I should finish with this lots good for us with the U.S. bad policy. Poland is not here, but I think that we, from the country which never was here, we were never a welfare state, but we had ideals which were taken from the welfare state, are moving straight to the place which is like United States. And United States recently came to a reason. They started the Second Chance Act, which is putting a lot of money to stop imprisonment. Of course, it's not enough to put the money to stop imprisonment. They are still, I think, missing the thinking of including people who are getting out of prison, but at least they are really doing a lot of efforts to reduce number of uh, possibilities to put people in prison for a longer period or at all, right? It's more complicated than that, but I think that since United States admitted that their criminal policy is broken, that it's not bringing the positive effects, we at least should know that this is not an argument that we should use in our criminal policy, which we were using very often. Americans are doing the same. So at least we should know that Americans were stating quite openly that that's not the way we want to do it. This is not the way we should. We are losing too many, and it's cost, and that's another discourse which started. It's not only cost in finance, it's also cost in social costs that, that, that we are losing. And of course it is up to you if we are going the Finnish way, or if we are going this way, which will not bring us positive result, but for some it might be quite effective when that someone will do short term politics. Sorry for talking that. <laughs>